How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome back to another pixel platformer tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to go over my level design. So I wanted to do that with you and I thought that would be a good video to have, but after I watched it back it didn't really keep my attention and I didn't want to bore you with it. So I'm going to explain to you what I did. As you can see, I have drawn out a level. Now the first thing that I did was I took out our player from the window size because originally we had just drawn a level in size or dotted in size inside our dotted line here. And the dotted line is our window size and it's like our zoom rate. So essentially I was able to move it all down because I went to our player and I added the behavior of scroll to. So now our scroll to behavior is going to act as our camera. And usually I make a separate camera object, but I thought since I do that in all of my other tutorials, we don't really need to do that. And now the camera, the scroll to behavior, will follow our player wherever we go. So we no longer need to have anything inside the window unless it's a HUD element. Okay, so once I did that, let me play the game here and show you exactly how it looks now. So you can see that we have our cool player, the same as before. But now, when we jump, the camera follows us, and when we walk, so does, it also tracks our X position, obviously, X and Y. So the other thing that you'll notice is, besides my awesome level, is the parallax in the background. Now, you can mess around with the parallax, and it's something that I think is really up to you if you want to have it in your game or not. Uh, but it's something that is really easy to accomplish in Construct 2, and it's really cool. So let me explain to you how I did that. The first thing I had to do was I had to set up our level or our layer structure. So I did a background, a midground, and our level, just like we had before, except I added a midground. So let me uncheck these and hide their visibility. And we'll start with the background. So the background, if I unlock it, is a tile map. It's the original, it's the original tile map that we used. It's tile map sprite sheet, and what I did was, because it was this big, I moved it down a few. I think I had it. Where did I have it? Oh man, control Z. Okay, I had it somewhere around there. But, there you go. This is my background tile map, and it's basically just this. Now, I could have imported this as a tiled image, I could have done other things like that, or a tiled background, but... This works fine because I can add other things. Like later on, I might go in and add a sprite for the tree or something like that. Now, what I did to add the parallax effect was if you click on the layer, you can go into the parallax right here and you can change the X position. You want to leave the Y position alone because this is the speed. This is like the offset of how fast this layer is going to be perceived. And since 50 is half speed, I put it just below half speed. So when you run it, the background looks like it's really lagging behind a little bit. And I think I messed something up here. Did I? I might have. Let's see. Oh yeah, this is not supposed to be 40. Let's move this guy up a little bit. Let's move this guy to 60. So that's how easy it is to do parallaxing. And let's hit play and test that out now. And yay, there you go. You can see that they're moving at different speeds. So let's look at the midground, the one that I just edited. So let's uncheck that. And now for my midground, I just put this. And it's not the best. It could be better. But this is basically things that you would be interacting with, but it's not at the same time. It's the, it's the stuff in the background, and it's the stuff that's supposed to be farther away. So I, I can mess around with this all we want. I can unlock this, and I can move this up. I can move it downwards, and I can just really start to actually add more detail to it if we wanted to. There we go. Now we have something that looks even more crazy. It just looks a little bit different, you know? So that's something else that you can totally add to the game. So let me put this back because I liked it where it was. Then I have my level on top. So our level is something that I just kind of drew. It was just kind of me just drawn crazily with the, the pencil tool. And then I just filled it in with tiles. And then I just put our collision like we've always had. So I hope that makes sense. It's basically just stacking these tile maps on top of each other. And you want to put these on separate layers because you can't grab tile maps all at the same time. So if I had all of these unlocked, all I'll be able to grab is the topmost one. So it's, I can't edit the midground or the background. Now this does use up our four layer limit. But you can combine the entities with your level, and then that way you can have another layer for your HUD. 
So that is how I designed the level. Now there is one fix that I had to put in, a bug that I had to fix, and that was in my player event. What I did was I went to the add event, object player, if our player is by wall, and then I added the left and right here. But then what I did was I right clicked and I made it an or block. So if our player has a wall to the left or a wall to the right, so if it collides with a wall, like right here, if it, oh man, this is why I need to lock things. Okay, there we go. If it collides right here or right here, wall to the left or right, then set the animation to idle. Now I could have just done it the same way we've been doing it, but I just typed in ID idle. And the reason is you just, if you don't have that, then it's going to think you're still walking. So at least this way, it just completely stops. So make sure that you put that in there if you get that bug. Now, that's pretty much it. I hope that makes a lot of sense to you, and I hope that you just mess around with your cool level design. Whatever you come up with, I'm sure will be much better than my level design. But I want to see what you can come up with and what you can use, uh, what you use with these tiles, or if you draw your own tiles, or whatever. That would be cool to see, and it'd also be cool to see tweak these numbers. Feel free to go around and, you know, change the parallax rate. Don't use mine. I mean, just again, mine is 80 for the level, 60 for the midground, and 40 for the background. Mess around with it, see what works, because it's really easy to go back and fix it. So that is it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.